Hello everyone, thank you for watching today's video. My name is Dmitry Vinik and I'm an open source developer advocate at Facebook. Today we will talk about DocuSource, a fast and reliable open source platform that lets you build documentation and not just documentation websites. For the rest of the video I will uh, show you a clip of me speaking about DocuSource at an Algoli community party. For the rest of the uh, event Please see links in the description. Thank you for watching. And as you can guess, I'm going to talk about DocuSource from my background and also from the, you know, this first slide. So we'll talk about how to make your documentation easy, how to get started, how to build it, how to iterate on it. Uh, my name, my name is uh, Dmitry Vinik. I'm an open source developer advocate at Facebook, and you can see my Twitter um, name right there below. So uh, before we really dive into what DocuSource is. I want to say thank you to all uh, for joining. For some, for some of you, it's quite late in the day. For some of you, it's early morning. So again, I appreciate your time um, you know, today in this Algoli community party. So um, I always like to establish the agenda. And the, the way we'll go through this presentation would be by, first, we'll define the problem we'll try to you know, solve today. And to solve the problem, we have to define the solution that I'll try to propose and hopefully convince you that that solution indeed can solve the problem we've established. And also, of course, it has to be applicable to you. And we'll discuss how that solution fits your use case and how you can fit it to, uh, you know, fit your market, your business, your project. So in that case, the problem would be, why do we need docs? How do we even write them? How do we get developers first to actually work on documentation? And the solution I would propose would be using DocuSource. And uh, DocuSource hopefully will help you, you know, define the importance of documentation. And we'll approach it from both theory and also practice. We'll do some demo. And uh, at the end, we'll discuss how you can extend DocuSource to fit your need uh, and hopefully get you, you know, excited about contributing to DocuSource since it's a, an open source project first. So, again, let's get started to discussing why documentation why do we even care um you know i'd like to bring up other experts you know to the table and in this case i was lucky enough to listen on a presentation by uh, jeff sunquest at devil con last year where he he's leading the microsoft docs team and really when he was describing how they approach developer experience and they always always start with great documentation you have to have something of, of sort getting starting guide. And that's the guide that you can send developers, your users, your customers, the pro people who are interested in your project. You have to have something documented. And you know, it doesn't, no, not some, just something, it has to be something great, and well, um, you know, explained. That's why documentation is so important because it's a foundation for anything you build. And if we were to go even you know, more into metrics and were to just analyze top open source projects, obviously it's subjective how we analyze it. We just look at GitHub top open source projects. And 20% we found was, uh, would have documentation using just README, straight README, nothing else. And 80% would have documentation uh, using a website. So it would be full website with search, localization, and obviously documentation. And as you can guess, 0% of those top 20 had no documentation. So if you were to just focus on that 80%, right? I say documentation using websites. Does it mean that we have to build doc site from scratch? No, we all know it's gonna be complicated, right? Have to handle styling, have to handle versioning, localization, searching, tons of other things that we don't wanna have, you know, start getting into. It's too much work, nobody has time for that unless you're building a documentation uh, framework. And uh, that's where I would like to talk about DocuSource. So you don't have to build a doc site from scratch. And um, again, when it comes to DocuSource, uh, it has features like building search. Again, thanks to Algolia integration, it's as easy as just adding your credentials to a single config, it will start working for your site we have versioning built in which is essential if you have any sort of api documentation if you're working with java and you have a java 8 java 9 and so on you want to make sure that your documentation stays in sync it's versioned you also would love to have localization we're global 
it's never, you know, I'm currently in US, we don't want to just have, you know, English uh, documentation, we want to have documentation in French, in Spanish, and other languages, right? So it's extremely important. And imagine building it from scratch. Fortunately, we're working with companies like CrowdIn that provides this service. And it's, again, easy to integrate in DocuSource. It has a markdown. Uh, so again, if you want anyone to do anything for you, you have to make it easy. In this case, if you want your developers to write documentation, and more importantly, to maintain the docs, you have to make it simple for them to write. And Markdown, if anything, is a de facto tool for writing docs these days. That's what we used to write readme. And uh, with DocuSaurus V2, which I'll talk about more later on, it supports something called MDX, which basically allowing you to have GSX write into your Markdown. In other terms, have React components in your Markdown. And I'll show you an example later on. And again, more importantly, if anything, DocuSaurus is built on and supports React. You can have React pages. You can control your st style using React. And so if you have experience with that, it will, it will be easy for you to get started and you know, make changes to your site. Again, DocuSource is amazing. I've talked quite a bit of things about theory, but let's get to demo. Let's get our hands on the keyboard, like the DocuSource here, and um, I'll dive into my VS Code still. All right, I, I, you know, I've tried to make it as large as, can, as I can. And again, you know, we open our terminal. I've prepared already a simple project here, but currently I have basically nothing apart from just the folders that we'll use for the presentation. But let's say you started from scratch. How do I get started from scratch? I go to DocuSource website. This, as you can see, DocuSource v1. So this is what we call v1, first version. But it's well documented. It's what's currently used in production. So let's make it a bit more exciting and look at DocuSource V2. It's been this, uh, brought up um, throughout you know, presentation before mine. And so, you know, V2 is something again in, in development right now. There are some missing features that we are again trying to you know, complete, like localization. We're going to work on that more. But it has support for MDX and as being brought up, it's very easy to switch to dark mode and light mode, which is all the rage is about these days. So let's get started. We go to documentation. After going to the doc, to the doc site, let's make it larger. And I would go to getting started guide. Again, getting started guide. We go to the installation. And it's a simple operation to start with. So you just uh, use MPX, uh, you initialize your site. You give a site a name and you choose a template. We provide you a couple of templates uh, out of the box. We'll just go with classic. So let's say I want to build a new site. I copy that operation into my terminal and as it, it starts, right? I don't want to wait and also, you know, build the packages and all that. It will create you a new site. You have to build NPM or Yarn, whatever you like to use. I already done that uh, separately. So let's go right here. I created this simple site already that I called Algolia event. And, you know, to get started, it will be as easy as for me to run npm run start and it would launch a site for me in just a mere seconds again docusaurus is a static generator very performant uh, that i've mentioned built with react you can use markdown to write your docs let's switch to the dark mode let's make it larger and you can see minimalistic design right it has a name of your site has a tagline a few links to the getting started and a couple of features highlighted with a nice footer that has links to the docs, uh, the copyright statement, community links, so all the necessary stuff, right? And if I want to go to documentation, I would go to docs, everything is in markdown. If I wanted to edit those docs, I can scroll all the way to the bottom. And because this website is linked directly to GitHub, in my case, it can be GitLab if you want to, but if it's linked to GitHub, I go to edit this page and because, you know, it's already versioned and the committed to the GitHub repo, I can edit it right here in the GitHub. So we heavily rely on this developer workflow, right? Working with GitHub, editing in GitHub, making changes, making commits. So I don't even have to have a code open, the VS code or whatever you like to use for working with Markdown. I can go right in the GitHub. The same goes for the block. You know, you have a list of blocks. Those blocks have tags, so you can do filtering of your blocks and also editing of the blocks. So 
again, it's a nice different audience here, right? No, kind of developers, but non-developers. So you don't really have to go to VS Code and IDE, but you can make changes right here. But it's all exciting. At the same time, you know, and just using the UI. I'm a developer myself, I like to use IDEs. In this case, in VS Code, let's say I wanted to add a brand new uh, block. I would have to create a new file. I name it something like Algolia, right? And then I just, you know, I uh, just start writing, right? So we would give it a name, we'll name it Algolia event, we would give it an ID. Um, sorry. Uh, Algolia, and we'll say something cool like hello, Algolia. And you know, you don't have to, okay, sorry. I wouldn't even have to refresh really. I can go right here and uh, actually work with it if I wanted to. But um, in terms of what MDX is really, MDX that I also given, uh, kind of mentioned briefly, just from the, you know, seeing an example here, you can see that. This is pure GSX. You can see that it's basically React components right in the markdown, and they get they get rendered in your U UI uh, right here and there. So basically, this is all highlight. This is not just CSS. This is a pure uh, you know highlight constant in this case, which again does a span, a styling. So this is what MDX is. I'm not really diving into what how exactly it's functioning, but more importantly is that you can easily make it. Uh, implemented within your markdown files. If I wanted to go, you know, in more depth and do things like uh, integrating my search, as been mentioned before, it's as easy as you would go to the configuration file of Docusaurus, and you the only thing you would have to do is specify an API key, an index name, and optional Algolia uh, specifications for your you know, documentation site. One more important thing I really want to mention and give you a demo of would be the coolest thing, I think, personally, of Docusaurus V2 is the, the new architecture, where now it's really, it's all about plugins. So imagine before when you're working with V1 and you wanted to have some new functionality, let's say monitoring of config changes or sitemap generation or uh, Google Analytics support, you would have to change the very platform Docusaurus was built on. So go to Docusaurus and make those changes. It's a hassle. It requires lots of you know permissions just on the GitHub workflow. It is complicated. But with V2, it has a plugin architecture. Um, so you really imagine if you ever work with VS Code, you know you have uh, lots of plugins to work with uh, that or extensions as they call it here. So you can really write the functionality you need outside of Docusaurus V2 and then plug it into the site that you're working with. It, it's easy as, let's build one right now. We have quite a few pre-built on Docusaurus V2 for again, Google Analytics, Google Tag Manager, Sitemap, uh, the couple with the styling. It's very easy to integrate. And let me give you an example how to do it. So this is what we call Docusaurus config file. Um, it looks again very straightforward. You know, it has a title, tagline, URL, so uh, links to the favicons that will again render on your site. But if I wanted to have a plugin, I'll scroll to the very bottom and I would type plugins. And in this array, I would specify a list of plugins. So let's build one. So to build a plugin, let's create a new folder. Let's call it uh, monitoring. Plugin. Let's uh, let's go into that folder really quickly. So let's go into the folder. Let's initialize the you know initialize the project. So we have the project initialized now. Let's create a quick file. Let's create the index.js. Basically, a starting point of this project. It can be whatever you'd like, but index.js in my case is the easiest because it's the default. And here, again, you create, uh, and all that is documented, how to create a new plugin uh, in something we call uh, Lifecycle API. So if I were to go to documentation, Lifecycle API, very well documented, and it has something called uh, a sync load content uh, operation. So let's say I wanted to work with it, and I have to give it a name. So, for, so let's say, sorry, made a mistake. So I would export the function. 
function should return an object. Uh, we name, again, we're building a plugin here that monitors any changes that we make to the configuration file. Let's say you want to write some regression test of some sort. So we call it monitoring plugin. And then again, you have this that function I just show you, load content. And in this operation, you do whatever you wanted, whatever functionality you want. In my case, I want to make sure I print to the command line that uh, config was changed, run tests. So now, how do I actually make it work? I go again to my uh, docusaurus config file, and because it's a local project, I just give a path to it. If it was in PM package, it will be also in PM package name. So let's go back to our site. Yes, so you can see I just make that change. So let's make a change to the config file. Let's, uh, for example, change this URL. And you can see it was printed in a command line. Again, it's part of the site now. I didn't have to restart and have to rebuild. It's all working as is. So very simple, very you know, very straightforward. Um, it's just part of the functionalities that I want to highlight today. Uh, again, React with React, you can build pages. I'm not going to go deep into that because we already give you a starting point here in the source folder under pages. Again, this is the React uh, component, but this is what I wanted to talk about uh, as a demonstration of DocuSaurus. And I wanted to you know, finish this presentation by really talking about DocuSaurus and you, how you can get started with it. Uh, become part of our community. Go into Discord. It's a very active community and a very active chat where you can ask questions for your use cases. Our Twitter, we have updates. Help us with transition from V1 to V2 and you know, um, try to build new plugins for the community or for yourself. So with that, I really want to say thank you again for listening. And with that, we'll go into the Q&A. Thank you. Congrats, Dimitri. Um, so let's give uh, Dimitri a, a round of applause. <laughs> and so yeah, you have six questions in the Q&A. Um, do you see them? Um, I'm gonna ask them to you. So we have Sarah asking, if I'm not mistaken, DocuSaurus is statically generated, but if JavaScript is enabled, it behaves as an SPA. Is there a way to make it fully static? No JavaScript takeover? Fully static. I mean, so basically, yes, it's possible. So basically how it works really is when you build a docusaurus, it generates those, the static files. So if I were to run, if I were to go to my VS code and I were to run, uh, if, if I were to run, let me show it to you right here. If I were to run npm run build, which is, I don't have it here because oh, I'm not in the folder, but ultimately DocuSaurus build, uh, it creates the folder that we, for example, when we publish DocuSaurus site for open source projects in uh, Facebook, we, we commit them straight into the GitHub pages uh, branch, and that's basically static content that you can render. So if I were to again, to show it to you really quickly, it's as easy for me as run build, and it would generate a build folder for me right here. Um, Give it a second. Yeah, because it has to generate and run through all of that, but then again, it's static. So you don't have to really rely on JavaScript per se. So yeah, it's this build, of, build folder. It does all of that for you. It was kind of a awkward first, but again, the index is what you could see that, oh, sorry. Yeah, index and all of that is basically rendered straight from the, the source, the JavaScript and the markdown. Okay. Okay, cool. So we have a question from Serdar. Any plans in the future to support also ACI doc markup language? ACI, ACI doc, sorry. Mm -hmm. ASCII docs, oh, okay. Uh, you can, so basically, I'm not quite sure what's missing today per se, in how, but the fact that we support MDX in the Loki Service V2, it allows you to do all sorts of things. For instance, I'm working with the research team that had the, you know, need for latex, uh, you know, type of formatting for formulas, those complicated formulas with the logarithms and whatever, uh, which I'm not even going to, you know, try to understand. But to re properly render it in the UI, in the have this latex support with MDX, because you can plug it into the markdown right away, 
you can technically have support for anything, including ASCII, uh, LaTeX, all sorts of things. Okay, and we have Jiri asking a similar question as Serda. The problem we have with Markdown is that we cannot, you cannot embed a code snippet from real code, like te test suit. You have to copy and paste, uh, copy and paste it, which it introduces a big risk of code snippets not being com compatible or working at all. How does DocuSaurus solve this problem? Is there any tooling we could use to embed code directly? Yes, again, it's all MDX. You know, I feel like I'm, uh, I'm not, so the MDX, to just show you the, you know, how great it is, um, I'll, I'll just do it right here. It's, uh, that will give you really a lot of, you know, explanation why it gives you functionality to do basically anything you'd like. So if I wanted to have, sorry, so if I wanted to have, uh, my bad, I'm uh, not doing great. Uh, so, so if I want to have a new page called showcase and in that page, I, I don't want to write the React right here, but I have this simple, you know, component, right? React component, that's a showcase, that's render whatever HTML in this case. If I want to do render something else, I can also write it. In your case, if you want to have a straight up code, you can also do that. But um, I'll show it to you. So the reason why I'm even highlighting it is if I want to do index.js and I paste it, I go to my site, sorry, I go to my site. Where's my site? Oh my God. Okay, let me, I can turn. All oh, right, I understand. I'm presenting. Oh, actually, yes, I'm screen, sharing the screen. Okay, let's go to my site again. So if I go to blocks, sorry, if I go to docs, okay. So it was a new page, right? So to go to a new page, I have it right here, showcase. So this is what I created, that component, right? But it's not what I'm trying to show here. If I copy the path to this component and I go to that, I don't know, to this existing markdown and what I would do is I would say import showcase from, and I have the path, and then I say at the bottom showcase, and I go to the block, and I go to that Ola. This thing below here is not a site; it's actually a component I just showed you. It's the it's the full. You can even play have fun with it because it's basically a DocuStore site within, right? So, in here you have a full on functioning, whatever functionality you wanted, React component. So you can technically have so much fun with it. You can have the code snippet, you can have the latex, you can have a new website within the website if you wanted. Think of it as an iframe within your site. Um, that's what MDX basically is. So you can have is a unlimited, unlimited number of functionalities available for you. All right. Um, new question from Sarah. How many pages can DocuSaurus handle? That's a good question. I don't think there is a limit really. I mean, it all depends on, hmm. I don't, I don't, I'm not aware of any hard limit. I think, let me be honest. But, you know, if you think from the perspective of how you work with Google Analytics, Google Tag Manager, Algolia, localization, you know, if you start, you know, putting those on the equation, Maybe there is a hard limit. I can't think of any really. Ultimately, it's a static site generator, right? So as many as you wanted to, if, especially if it's like, if you build it and you compile it to just HTML and CSS, I don't see any. Okay. Um, question from Jean. Is there any support for integrating HTML pages generated from another tool? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm working with that right now. Um, so uh, another tool, it's an example of, for instance, Sphinx. Uh, if you are a Python developer, you generate API docs from uh, Python files. Or if you're working with Jupyter Notebooks is another example, or Java docs, and so on. I understand the, where the, the, <laughs> the use case uh, is. Um, so I would be honest for V1, DocuSource V1, that's fully functioning so we even have a couple of projects uh which i can link after the presentation as part of the slides sharing um like Boltorch and ax and those uh projects are very heavy on python and so uh they easily integrate sphinx into the flow where it generates nice ui instead of me talking about let me actually show it to you 
and it basically lets you, so this API reference, this is Sphinx HTML files. So it shows right here, it renders as you would render Sphinx. And what I like the most is it has, you know, the same styling as the rest of the site. In V2, it's a bit more complicated. I would say the functionality, functionality parity between V1 and V2 in that sense is not there yet. We're actively working by we, I don't mean Facebook per se, I mean the community of Docusaurus. But um, if you want to have it today, I would say V1 would be the best bet. And V2 is something that I hope will come uh, sooner than later. But yeah, this is a good example. You can see in the URL as well, it's an HTML. And again, it's a Sphinx um, project that, you know, Python developers use heavily. The same for Java Docs uh, and so on. Good, good, great questions so far. Awesome question. Cool. Uh, we also have a question in the chat from Charlie. Will there be native support for OA, OAS, uh, for example, Swagger Redoc on Docusaurus soon? I'm, <laughs> so I, I'm not quite sure of the question. Uh, native support of for OA, OAS, for example, Swagger or Redoc on Docusaurus soon? I'm not quite sure. I, uh, you know, I'll, 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 you know, I'll try to ask that question in Discord. I'm like the the community, but I'm not. Yeah, I'm not sure of that. Honestly, the like so, the roadmap of the community obviously is open, but our main focus is like in the. We try at Facebook, for instance, and just you know helping to with the, uh, with the open source for DocuSaurus is uh, V2 at the moment, and really supporting fu functions like accessibility, localization. To have a, yeah, to answer this question, I'm not quite sure exactly, but I would be very happy to uh, you know if you could ask, and I'll link in the slides if you could go to the Discord that you can find at the very bottom of the uh, DocuSaurus site, and also in my slides, and ask that question. Would very much appreciate it to know the answer myself too. Okay, so we still have a few questions. We're gonna try to wrap up quickly. Uh, Ravi Teja is asking: Is there a way to integrate Docusaurus with Hugo? I mean, there are two. So I can. I'll show that thing. So there is that. I mean, there is this site right that from Netlify, I believe. Uh, static gen that shows you all the list list of all the static generated websites. Hugo is another tool, and DocuSaurus is a different tool. There's also Next.js and Gatsby and plenty of others. Obviously, the market is large, and Hugo's been there, there I think, even longer uh, than DocuSaurus. But in general, it's two different tools. I don't know what exactly you would like to integrate, maybe some functionalities. But uh, I, I'm a big proponent of not mixing tools in general, and uh, it's just my personal opinion. And uh, really, get to simplify the tool chain and uh, choose a tool that works for your problem. But uh, if you want to learn more why we differ from other tools, uh, at the bottom of V2, it explains comparison to other tools, Gatsby, Deepbook, and so on. Okay, cool. And so, final question from Sarah again uh, Is it possible to easily keep the content and the website separated with Docusaurus? For example, via Git submodules or REST API as the source to fetch the data before compilation. And she has a follow-up question. Can you get rid of the generated JavaScript and only rely on the generated HTML? That's what I meant by fully static. Yes, yes. I uh, so um, I hope it's in the main readme of the project, but, um, or if, if it's not, it's in, definitely in the projects that we deal where we explain how we deploy uh, using DocuSaurus. But basically when we, so we have a CI that basically builds the, the static sites that basically that build folder that I showed you, right? So this build folder that again, gets generated by running whatever, yarn or NPM run build or DocuSaurus build ultimately. It creates all those static, the just pure HTML, pure CSS. And we take this build folder and we move it and we, we committed into the uh, GH pages uh, branch on GitHub. And that's what basically we get, we render. And I, I, if it's not documented on the DocuSaurus itself, which I picture it is, uh, we have it documented as part of like any doc um, folder for individual projects at Facebook, which again, I believe it's just pure DocuSaurus docs themselves. But yeah, this flow is what we usually follow. CI plus J, uh, GitHub pages, and just your deployment of 
simply the static files. Okay, all right. So I think uh, we are good with the questions. So thanks so much, Dimitri. Uh, if you don't mind stopping sharing your screen and I'm going to yes. share mine. So Thank big you. round of applause for you. Congratulations, it was great. Um, so just to say a last, last few words. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us at the community party online. We're going to do another soon. In the meantime, you can join us to next our next developer events. Uh, when is next week about key learnings from tech leaders of top, top online marketplaces uh, about the build versus buy decision. And then the week after we have a live coding session about building a video catalog browser in no time. So you receive a link, uh, an email with the recording of this, this video of the two talks. And so, yeah, uh, let's hope to see you soon. Thanks so much for joining. And yes, yeah, spread the word and see you next time. Have a good day.